Oh. Welcome to the Technostatic <laughs> Podcast. I'm your host, Eric, and this is your host, Randy. Hey. We're already off to a great start. We're so, off to uh, a great start. So uh, I'm left-handed, and for those of you who are watching in like a, uh, a video platform like YouTube, I want to take a drink and then hit my boom arm, which you can now see in a new location. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to drink with my right hand today. That's yeah. right. Yeah, so let's start the podcast off right, because I just saw you take a sip, dude. What are we drinking? I am drinking, um, it is Green City by Other Half. My God. One of my favorite beers. Wow. Looks uh, good, dude. I'm just drinking a balls Super again. Super tasty. Dude, you... You know what I'm saying? Guys always drinking down balls. Dude. Yeah, dude. Always. Ginger balls this time. I got another balls right here just in case I uh, I get thirsty. Well, dude, how's the ginger balls? I like the ginger one, dude. I, 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 I like ginger, so I would probably like that one. Uh, did you get like a variety pack when you moved in as a gift? Or like yeah. how did that work? That's well, sweet. Uh, no, I, I, I think uh, everyone buys the blue ones, right? So the yeah, gift like standard, was like right? the blue. I grab a Sea of Thieves coaster. Oh my God, where'd you get that? Plunder? Yeah, Kelly got it for me. That's yeah, awesome. Dude, there's like a whole bunch. I have like Devil's Roar, Sailor's Bounty. Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh... Yeah, before before we get into it, like, because I could talk uh, casually all day, just a couple things we want to address. We just want to talk about what we're going to talk about on the podcast today. So, there was a Microsoft event. I didn't know about it. I didn't either. I uh, found out from you. So yeah, I was like, oh, what? Uh, a Microsoft event happened? I had no idea. I was I literally went to the Verge because everybody was like right. uh, reviewing like the iPad Mini, and I was wanting to see if they had anything for it, and. I saw that there was this Microsoft event summary, and I'm like, what? <laughs> what? There was a Microsoft event? Uh, so I figured we'll talk about that. Why not, dude? I mean, we covered the Apple event. Might as well cover the Microsoft yeah, event. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, no, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. So did you, I didn't see it, right? So it's like, yeah. I didn't see it at all. You linked me the new studio, the, the laptop studio, and I like it. Okay. From what I've seen, I like it. Okay. I uh, so I don't even know what all they announced. I, I let's just go over that. I know they have like a Surface Pro Eight, like maybe a Surface Go Three. Uh, I guess I, I was on their Microsoft website looking. They did announce so, a Surface Duo Two. The know. phone. Yeah, the phone. Really? Yeah. They got What's it look two. like? I'll I'll show you. So no, this will be the first time I'm seeing it. Surface Duo Two, two screens, oh. limitless possibilities, and they have this new black finish. Uh, they, and there's cameras on the right side. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Interesting, right? The cameras actually look, like, beefier. I wonder if they're actually any good. Um, you know, very hey, interesting. It's do, got a pin. Does the camera hump protrude now or no? Yeah, that definitely looks protruded. So then how does it lay flat <laughs> when you fold it over in, like, Well, that's mode? the thing. You fold it over on the non-camera side, right? And I, I You use that out? on the bottom, and then you put the camera side on the top, like a laptop, right? What? No, no, but like I'm saying, like the first oh. Surface Duo, like you could fold it over so you had a screen on both sides. Oh, good point. So how do you do that with the camera hump? I don't know. Let me see if I, I don't see anyone doing that. They advertise this like light bar feature thing. Where, That's pretty cool. Where like there's like a strip of the screen you can see and they have stuff like show up on it. Like your time, you got a missed call, you got well, messages. That's pretty neat. I like that. Yeah, I mean, I love little quirky features like I this. I do too. Yeah, I'm a quirk, dude. Yeah, dude. Like I'm all about it. They they talked about Big the cameras quirk. being better, but let's be real, they're probably just like mediocre. Yeah. Uh, but you know, <laughs> even the pictures that they were showing off in the little videos or whatever, I was like, eh. How do they have a better pen solution than Samsung? I know it actually clips to the thing like magnetically. Yeah. What? Samsung, please. <laughs> But that looks pretty good. Like, they have the old finish. Show me those cases. Show me those cases. Because cause that, 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 that orange boy looks pretty nice. What are you talking about? Oh, this? Oh, yeah, look Surface at those cases, Accessories. Surf oh, there's, like, uh, a bumper? Uh, oh, Surface a bumper. Duo bumper, yeah. What is that? What is going with that bumper? Why is it, like, one side is protected? What? Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of interesting, right? Like It's really interesting. Uh, What's the cost on this? 40 bucks, And you got four different finishes. The also. phone. Oh. Eric, the phone. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the bumper, dude. Like, what do you want? Hold on. I got to go back now. I think it was like $13.99 or something. Oh, my Lanta. Let me go back. It's not going to sell for $13.99. Uh, $14.99. 14. Oh, my Starting. Lord. Why would you buy this over a Fold? Uh, well, it's cheaper. What's the processor this time? 
Let's find out. So, and what's because like the last one was like mid range specs, boy. Mid range. I know specs. that was the problem with the last yeah. one, right? Uh, so uh, it's got. Is there an eight eighty eight? Maybe. Maybe. I'm looking at. Okay, so they're gonna show off specs that aren't the processor. Five. Yeah, dude, that's definitely a camera hump, by the way. Yeah, look, actually, it's weird. It's like angled. Do you see this? Yeah, it's bizarro world, right? So how do you fold that boy over? Yeah. That's weird. Uh, this is this is not gonna sell, man. Because like, if you can't have a screen always up, and like, eight eighty eight, you have a barrier to entry that you have to fold it over. Mm -hmm. Like that's not intuitive to people. Well, well, maybe intuitive is the wrong word. Like it's, yeah. it teaches you to not use it. You know, yeah, like, maybe like it's, it's the same a, reason why I don't like folios. Yeah, maybe it's you, not you know, that like, big a deal. I don't know. I had to f hold. I mean, it. maybe not. Maybe not. Like, like obviously it was a deal though, right? Because they kind of brought that sidebar in that the first one didn't have. Because right. like when you had the the, the the like Surface Duo, the first one closed. How do you know if you have a notification? How do you check anything? I don't know. That was the problem with it. You know what I mean? But like, like now, it, at least they have that slit bar thing. Where it's yeah. like you can see that, yeah. you know, that yeah. you, like you well, get. Well, little... it does have a slit, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Also, eight gigs of RAM that's already built behind the Foldy Boy. It's got more storage than the iPhone does. No, it doesn't. Right? Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. The Pro starts at 128. Yeah, now. yeah, good point. The Pro starts at 128. I keep seeing 64 uh, gig in like the iPad Mini. I don't like all these built in softwares, uh, like built in LinkedIn. Ooh, good point, dude. That's kind of gross. Yeah, like, I mean, maybe you can install them or disable them, but still, like, yeah. like Microsoft Start. What is Microsoft? I've never even heard of Microsoft Start. That's probably Have like you? Google Now or something, right? Like you would well, think. It well, was scroll like... down because it goes down to Google things. So see if it says Google. No, because like Google Assistant's baked in. Well, yeah, but you know, same thing with the Samsung Microsoft comes. Like you got it. Right? Samsung comes with Bigsby, but you can I, use. I Google thought they had Assistant. Cortana. Oh yeah. Microsoft Start, dude. They call. Do they have Cortana now? Microsoft Start is a. You're looking it up. <laughs> well, well, you can't even tell because <laughs> if I look do? up Microsoft Start, it says the first link is how did Microsoft start? Did Microsoft start <laughs> in the U.S.? Did Bill Gates start Microsoft? When did Microsoft start? Like literally, there's no results from Microsoft Start. I, I don't know what that is, guys. I don't know. If someone knows what it is, you can feel free to put it in the comments. But maybe it's they have a start button. On I don't know. <laughs> That's a feature, though. It's, like, yeah, wasn't there a version of Windows or Windows Eight when 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 uh, people would mod Windows to bring back the start button? Yeah, I know that was pretty funny. They, Maybe <laughs> that's what it is. Maybe yeah. it's now a feature. Yeah. You, you give someone something, then you take it away, then you give it back to them as a feature. Yeah, that's what it is, and then everyone like praises you for it, right? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know the Duo. Obviously, I don't think it's gonna sell, but at least this one like has more of a chance than the original it's got actual this one's intriguing specs like this one's kind of this one's kind of unique enough and has like the feature set that i feel i don't know i feel like maybe if the fold didn't exist yeah. that this would be a more exciting product but i mean guys like like everyone out there has a phone like don't you have phones yeah you know like like if you're looking to upgrade the difference between this and and, and samsung's generous traded offers is probably going to be next to ne ne almost identical in price my problem with this is like did i really need a dual screen phone like go to configure go okay. to configure now yeah sure okay so different colors right sure. look so everything's out of, stock, out of stock dude, dude they fully sold out dude yeah, yeah, but they probably made like six. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, scroll down. Yeah. I just want to see what the options are. Yeah, see, it's so like... 365, no, a fucking Is there no trade-in option here? Like... Uh, I don't know. Let's find out. Free order. Select a configuration. Oh, everything's out of... You have to get the Glacier Boy. I have to get the... Oh, wait. What? I don't oh, want man. 365. I don't want protection. What's the protection plan? So oh, it's that's not like, on okay. T-Mobile? Is that is is it, and there's no unlocked uh, version? AT&T Verizon, it says none, so you can act uh, none is okay, like well, activated let's go with none. device later. I don't want any of that and then that's it. Like there's nothing else. That's it. Check out. Like the Yeah, e guys, like like again, you know, everyone out there has a phone. I I doubt many people are first-time phone buyers. I I I don't see the I don't see why you wouldn't just get a Z Fold 3 instead of this. Because if you're trading in your current phone, it's probably going to be less than fifteen ninety nine. I hate that, like, I hate Microsoft. I hate 365. Get out of here. I just... You know what I mean? Like, it's... Uh, I know, it's weird. I know what you it's mean, dude. Me. Like, it, this is a weird product. I Microsoft just don't know how to do it, I think. But, like, everyone liked the Windows phones. Like, back in the day, they thought they were kind of neat. Like, they didn't have apps. Well, well, they were neat because they were cheap, right? Like they were, 
Yeah. They're cheaper than Android phones, than flagship Android phones. Let's look at some of these um, examples real quick. Okay, reading would be cool, right? Yeah, but reading on the fold is busted. Yeah. Like, like I don't know if you... This is cool. If you read a lot of books. Yeah. Uh, but Occasionally. Like, so, like, that's cool, but the fold does that. Yeah, but this has a bigger screen. What, what, what's the screen size if you combine both screens together? Hold on. So, 8.3 inch. So, it's an iPad mini. Basically, yes. iPad mini that can fold in half and has two separate screens. Yeah. Ugh. Like, if this yeah. had one big screen, now we're talking. But, like, having that crack in the middle ruins everything. Um, wait, wait, what does that say? Stream on one or two screens? No Wi Fi necessary. Oh, it, oh, dude, I can watch my Netflix and YouTube at the same time. Oh my oh, god, man. a use case that I want. The bar is really cool. I, w I will say that. Like, 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 I'm a sucker for the bar. I think the bar is neat. I mean, this is kind of like it's, an does, always on display on the front of your fold or something. Does this thing have a any dust or water or water resistance rating? <laughs> and, 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 out, dude. And, and and what's the charging uh, speeds? And okay. does it have wireless charging? All I know is it has a battery capacity, whatever. So it's the same battery capacity as the Fold. Okay. 4,400 milliamp hours. Um, storage, software, video playback, security. Fold. It's heavier than the Fold. Is it really? Well, it is yeah. bigger. Uh, yeah, I think the know. fold is 271 grams, but I, I battery I life up to 15.5 with that's local useless. video. Uh, that's such 20, a weird, yeah, that's such 20, a weird garbage. metric, right? Like, well, see, this is it. Local video playback. I need like YouTube yeah. playback over 5G, 4K yeah. videos. How long? Okay, can I so do it? okay, so it's 23 watt charger. Okay, okay, 23 watt charging, I guess. Well, it doesn't really say if it's 23 watt charging. It just it just says fast charging available using the Microsoft Surface 23, and, and mm. who knows what it actually is. Okay, yeah, but like it's that's it's misleading. like Microsoft Teams. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's bullshit. Teams, Skype, blah, blah, blah. Carriers, yeah. I don't know, man. One's eSIM, uh, one Nano SIM. It's definitely a step in the right direction, but again. It's the same conversation we have with other phones, but the fold exists. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the, like, I don't think either of us are interested in this. Like, this, I don't know. <sighs> I'm sure there's people out there that would like a device like this, but who? Who? I, Who's this for? I'm interested in it because it's, well. Hmm. I can't think of who it's for. Like, unless, to me, this is like a, like a, almost like, you know how, like, you get business laptops. I feel like this is like a business phone, like. Well, like I'm trying you know, to think of like of know. like would some of the people I work with who who just write like grants or documents for a living, right? Would they find a value in this phone? I I don't know, and, man. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so because I don't I don't see it. So, like, what are you going to do? Pull up pull up your reference material on one screen and then Microsoft Word on the other. I mean, think about um, this, right? Like, if you're, I guess, an artist could use it. Like, you could have your. Uh, reference material on the left and then you're drawing on the right one like that's there's no neat. i guess yeah like that's the, like you can think up use cases for it but like so like i think it's very rare that you're gonna get somebody that's like jazz maybe like the, it's not gonna be mass market appeal for this like i feel like the i don't fold know like for me mass market appeal. so so i'm trying to think like outside the box right like many people have have two monitors right so like i could see where they're coming from it's like more people want more screens. Like how how many screens do you have at work? I have two at work and I also more, use my Mac. More than one. Yeah. More than one. So if you take that approach, okay. So let's say let's say you're someone who is like a road warrior, like a business advisor who is a traveling salesman, okay? All right. And you may take a lot of Teams calls from your car because you're traveling for work meetings, or meetings with clients, so on and so forth. Maybe the thought process is you have, your, you know, your teams call up on one screen and then Outlook or maybe you're referencing an MOA on the other one. I okay. could see some value in that. I could see some value in that. Again, it's kind of a niche market. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I don't know either. I, just I don't know, think it's. I'm just like. Mm. I don't think there isn't a market for it. I think that the, like I said, like. I think that'd be pretty neat to be a road warrior on a team call on, on like a sales call 
you know, that like you're driving around, you pull into like a like a sheets and you're charging your Tesla or whatever. Right. And you have 30 minutes to kill and you want to make some cold calls and you pull up someone on Teams or some type of like IP phone or 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 even the standard phone. Yeah. And you're going over like an MOA or a contract or something. I don't know. So I, let I, me just say it could this, be a stretch, Steve. but if I own this phone, I would find ways to use it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I and, play and, a game and watch a Twitch stream, but I do that on my fold. Yeah, I feel like there's the fold just feels like a more well-rounded device for me, uh, and it's smaller. But I will right. respect them for the display specs. I mean, you have pretty decent displays here. Uh, 90 hertz refresh, 800 nits, nits peak. Um, test. Yeah. So so they are targeting high-end specs, bro. I mean, high-end yeah. Specs. High-end specs. I mean, that's pretty good. So for the people that need a device with this unique feature set like at least they didn't give yeah. you like last time where yeah. the the original duo was like last year's specs and it was real lower. quick is it still impossibly thin like the first one like it seems pretty thin so like but that's kind of cool right like i don't know for me when i picked up the surface duo one in best buy mm -hmm. yeah it's still thin yeah it's super thin dude the cool part about it was it was just thin you know what i mean like like that's the first thing you notice but again that camera hump is confusing to me because if they're treating this as as like a productivity device, like that's gonna wobble. That's gonna wobble, boy. Yeah, it's weird and it's like angled. I don't know yeah. what the deal is with that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, it looks like this may be another miss. Sadly, I, I don't know. I mean, I understand what they were doing, right? Like the first gen had a really mediocre camera, basically compared to even mid mid range smartphones. Like yeah. the, this this one at least looks like they put bigger sensors in it. They you know, they had to put a hump on it. I mean, think about yeah, it, dude. The thinner you make the phone, like, the more you're going to have a huge camera hump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, like, here's where I am with this, okay? Yeah. So, like, it's like we're looking for who is this phone for. Right. I don't think there's a lot of overlap in this phone between people who would use the dual screens and also need three cameras of decent quality. No. I don't think there's not. a lot of overlap there. You know what I mean? Like, No. no. I can't like, see like I think that's probably like a reviewer problem, you know, because like I feel like phone reviewers have gotten to the point where they basically go down a checklist and then yeah. if the phones don't check X, Y, or Z, they get a poor review. Right. So if Microsoft listens to the feedback of the community, they're like, oh, we got to put bigger cameras in this. They don't listen to, you know, the corporations who may order these for their sales force. They right. listen to mkbhd or your average consumer who was like all right let's do a camera test cameras suck you know like that's 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 what they care about because that's what people watch no i get it and i mean it might be a reviewer problem i'm sure there are people out there buying these still and i kind of sure i kind of want to like search for those people on youtube now like i want to see like the people that are really hyped for this i can tell you, you that know? this is probably the only phone that has gone a full phone cycle that i've never seen in the wild yeah, really? Like, the only like outside one? of a display. I haven't seen the well, fold like, in the wild, have you? Yeah, I have it. Well, yeah, but I'm saying like other people. Dude, I'm in the wild. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I'm saying other people, Lou. Like, come on, I'm dude. Wild. <laughs> I'm in the wild. <laughs> no, dude. Like, I haven't seen the fold in the wild. I haven't seen like the flip in the wild. I mean, my friend has it, so I guess he's wild enough. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I see one on my desk right now, dude. Okay. All right, all right. I, I've never seen a Surface Duo not tethered to a security tether. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah, I'm really curious if if you're listening to this and you've seen one, reach out to or us. Or know please. anyone who has one. Leave a like, comment and like, just... do they like it? Yeah. Do, do they find value in it? I, <laughs> I want to know if somebody loves this thing or yeah, hates like, it. I'm really curious. Yeah. So, but let's move on, dude. I think I'm done with the Duo. I'm done yeah, with it. Dude. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about probably the studio, right? Yeah, let's just move along with so, that. So I love this thing. I uh, love this you thing. You know, let me just tell, let me just say something real quick. Okay. Is this supposed to replace the Surface Book series? I think it is. I, again, I, I, I pulled up a Verge article and I said the Surface Book successor is here. Yeah. So I think yes. And I have some merit behind that. So, um, let me explain something to you. So it's so like, I do, I do, I do a ton of stuff at work, right? But I'm also, one of the hats I wear is IT admin. In my office, I have a stack of Surface Books 
uh, probably seven or eight deep, starting from Surface Pro 4s, that are broken. Okay. And they're broken for multiple reasons. They are broken because the soldered on Wi-Fi card stopped working. Uh, but primarily they break because uh, the battery swells. Yeah. Like, like, like there, there, there is a problem with micro and, and like, it's not just uni unique to me. I have a few friends who do ITIS and they all had the same problem with surface pros. Now, yeah. granted, not all of them, but that's a pretty high failure rate. Uh, yeah. We just had one last week where the screen was all pushed out because the battery was bolted. Wow. So I think that they have a real issue with having all of that heat behind the screen with the battery there as well. So I think that this is probably them maybe moving away from products that have that. I don't think we'll ever see the end of the Surface Pro yeah, because that's like their definitive product. Yeah. But if you look at the processors in that and in, in, in the pros now, they're real low wattage boys. Yeah. Can I get uh, something to off my chest? The laptops and the, sure, go on. So, I mean, okay, look at this. With what you said in mind, right? Like, obviously, they have a overheating problem, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they've they consolidated everything, and they've obviously taken taken cooling into account. Like, look at the way it's kind oh, of the like, bottom. Yeah, yeah. Look yeah. How weird that yeah. is, right? Like, it's I don't know yeah. if I can get more pictures of it, but it's like ventilated. No, like um, uh, if you pull up the video, wow, I, don't, I know how video hell? would work. Um, but. yeah, I could make video work, but. Uh, I'm just kind of looking at the, the the advertising, but like they've obviously taken coolant cooling into account here, which is great. Yeah, like they do like a whole like 10, 20 second snippet on the cooling on this thing in the video about like how it's like the best in class cooling. And like they even do like a really cut away, like a cool cut away where like you get sucked in the sides, go through the fans and blow up the wow. other side. Okay. Um, But for me, you know, um, I'm big into photography, you know, and... I do a lot of masking and stuff yeah and while photoshop and lightroom still aren't there in terms of what they are on the desktop on the ipad i would <sighs> masking on the ipad is god tier like drawing a mask on the ipad or cropping something out on the ipad is god tier yeah and it sucks because you're you're in this weird weird like obviously like, it's dilemma, gonna be good for you know this I mean? like it, it's it's, it's gonna it's be awesome. great for that so like so it's, it's like that's why I like it right and then like you're around people who who's like Surface yeah, Book was good for tablet, that. you know what I mean, you know what I mean? yeah but like but like think of what you have to do with the Surface Book man it's like with the Surface Book you have to disconnect the screen okay so like let's say you're like oh I'm gonna add some photos let me open Photoshop yeah and then you okay. go to disconnect the screen and so be like oh we can't get the graphics card in you she gotta you don't close gotta all your disconnect apps the then. screen you can just do you do it. you do what do you mean yeah. And then it wobbles all around. If you want it in like the actual draw okay, studio okay, mode, okay. you have to eject the screen, turn it around, and wow. then fold it back down. You know what? You make a great point here because if you look at how this picture is, dude, it's like stabilized. Yeah, yeah right? exactly like it's right. Got this back exactly. It's not going to wobble. And yeah. it, go, it goes almost perfectly flat with that little drawing angle. It, it can go all the way down. Yeah. And then, and then the, stand, the stand doubles up. So it's a little like, like a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? Okay. Yeah, I mean, dude, I, I, okay, I think for artists and for people that mask and do all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I think that that's better. It, it I is. I want to say, I, I, I am not buying one of these. The graphics oh, no. card is not there for me. So, but, but I can see this product being cool. I could admit that this is a cool product. I'm sure that this, like, there's a market for people that need this, uh, and it's going to be great for those people. I have to get off my chest, like. My okay, we both own the Surface Book Two, like personally, right? And we we did enjoy that laptop, but it did have a lot of. Cons. I still, I still use the Surface Book Three as my work laptop. Okay, so I think I had the two, right? It was the two, yeah, right. Pretty sure it was the two. Anyway, I I mean I really enjoyed it. I had issues with it, like Microsoft couldn't do their own drivers right like i'd get a new no. version of windows update like windows update would run new version of windows and like my gpu would break like i would just like yeah my computer so would crash after two hours so what i believe is going on because if you notice with the surface book 2 when you had it yeah. is you, you can't even install you can't even go out to like nvidia.com and download those drivers no. it doesn't know what graphics card you have so i think i think nvidia worked with microsoft to make like their own flavor of graphics card and you have to wait for microsoft to push those drivers out yeah but like a it's Surface like firmware if you're update. gonna and i did that right like eventually they corrected for these problems but like it's bs that i got a windows update and it broke like drivers and everything yeah like come so, on 
so my work surface book too and the reason I, re I i had to replace it was because no matter what i would do the fan would be on 100 percent. yeah that's gross and the and, fans and weren't like, quiet either and like the back of it i could probably cook sausage on yeah so uh, this is where my rant comes in what i have to get off my and chest. it's not like and it's not like i was able to like you know open it up and fix it yeah because you know in a world where the M1 exists, I'm not excited about this. I'm not excited. Yeah. Unless you're an artist, you need the pin, you need windows. Because if you're, like, honestly, I think if you're an artist, you're probably using an iPad. I ain't lying to you. Or yeah. you're, you're using, like, yeah. one of those, like, uh, Wacom no. tablets, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like, why would you do this when you could use an iPad? Because again, you have jank Photoshop and jank Lightroom on an iPad. Yeah, I, I mean they're better. They're better than they are, but they're still not desktop equivalents. Right. You know? So okay. Uh, and and like the Wacom tablet's cool, but it's not portable. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. Like this is an all-in-one solution. So like if you're like an animator, yeah. or like a or like like or something along those lines, or you do a lot of like retouching, like photo retouching yeah. mobily. I think this could be a win for like someone who's like a professional photo retoucher. We're going to look at the tech know. specs, dude. So they're, 16 they're junk. They're not or nice. 13, they're not nice. 32 yeah. gigs. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. honestly, I'm surprised not to see a 64 gig option. 120 Hertz though. Uh, 24, yeah. You, uh, no, I saw the one. Tw well, well, that's going to make the pen experience a lot nicer, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. And then you have a Dolby vision support, whatever that means. What's the peak brightness? Like yes. it doesn't say, does it? No. What the hell? Like, no. okay, yeah, you support Dolby Vision. I'm sure it's a really nice display for, yeah. but like, it's probably not like HDR status. Yeah. So, so the, the processor core, is actually though. kind of interesting. <sighs> yeah. No. Hold on. Hold on. S slow the phone, man. Slow I'm slowing phone. it down. So, uh, the uh, 11370H is a quad core with hyper threading. So it's so it's four cores, eight threads. Okay. Max turbo of 4.8, but it's also a 35 watt processor. Oh, so, wow. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's not that bad. Do you have GPU on this? No. Yes. Graphics? Yeah. Yeah. Three, yeah. Three, 350 TI, 3050 TI. That's the okay. problem I have. That's not so it's good. not quite a lot of graphical. What's the, yeah. I wonder what the wattage is on that sucker. 3050 TI laptop GPU. I wonder. Cause like, that's my thing. I feel like, like every laptop that's not the M1 is like dumb hot now. You know what I mean? Find dumb hot like when okay when i had the surface book 2 like it would just be like fan noise and you know brr, and it was like uh, i don't know so so a 3050 ti is just under a desktop 2060 okay yeah i mean that's not bad that's not bad at all it's not good like it's not like a gaming uh, card if you ask me like nowadays like yeah you could do a lot with yeah. this card if you're just a uh, so like so an artist so it's 80 watts it's 80 watts okay uh, so you're over like a hundred and some watts peak if you're using well, gpu cpu head. yeah but you're rarely going to max them both at the same time this laptop will probably hit around 100, 100. watts peak yeah yeah um and, and, and just to put that into perspective so like uh on Metro Exodus on Ultra and 1440p, a 3050 Ti laptop will get 45 FPS. Yeah. Uh, and a 3070 laptop, which is what you can get, I believe. What's the price on the service laptop, Duo? Uh, the, yeah, the, the, the service laptop studio. Uh, you want to know the Surface... What is it? Laptop? laptop they have the Surface studio. Pro 8. The, oh, the laptop studio price? Yeah, yeah for, for the i7 model. Oh. For, 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 oh. The, for, for, the, for the one that, that matters i7 nvidia g4 so you, so two grand two grand two, two grand, grand on okay. the starting like 16 okay gigs, so five so that's not SSD. too bad okay so so i was looking at those 14 inch razor laptops the other day that's 21.99 so for roughly the same cost if you wanted to ditch the touch screen you can get a 3070 mm -hmm. in there and a better ryzen processor yeah so I mean, that's I a know. neat so, machine. Uh, it is. And, and like, the price isn't unreasonable. Like, it's not yeah. an unreasonable ask, I think. I just want to know if Microsoft is going to support this thing, dude. Like, I had, I feel, I felt like the Surface Book 2, when it was working, 
it was it was pretty cool. Like I I really did like to use like what I would do is flip the oh, thing dude, around dude, dude. and game on it with a gamepad. It was awesome. Or like when I was on travel, like I'd flip dude. it around, have an external keyboard and mouse. It was awesome. Yeah, it's a cool feature, dude. What? Do me a favor, mm-hmm. pull up a picture of the screen again. What do you notice in the corners, dude? What do you notice, what, dude? The, does it have the magnet thing? No, what dude, the having? corners of the display. Oh, they're rounded. <laughs> dude. The, oh, dude. <laughs> there it is, dude. Oh, shit. Next gen, dude. There it dude, is. There rounded it is. corners. You know it's a modern device now. Yeah, for sure, dude. Like, and, it, you know, it's got Windows 11. Windows 11. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. This yeah. is cool. What do you think about, like, the Surface Pros? Like, I don't. Do you care I'm about not these? Excited about it. They no. have the Pro and then whatever this is, the Go. The Go is like a smaller, cheaper boy. I think it has like a 5G card in it. Oh, okay. That's kind of neat. But well, the Pro... But, but, but like it's jank, right? Like it's super like... I saw like the Pro or... has like the pin thing. In it the... has the new screen now. The, the, new the screen, screen seems awesome. nice. The, they have yeah. like the pin slot in the keyboard. It like folds. They had that for a while, I think. Oh, did they? They were kind of like hyping it up. Well, maybe, maybe they had it and they wanted to... Oh, you know what had that? The Google Pixel Slate had that. Oh, so they were basically <laughs> like... Look. That was a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Okay, new screen, but like... What has it, it got? Tech specs. I mean, pretty good. Pretty good. 120. Up to 100. Six years default. What? What? What are you talking about? Well, you know why they did that, right? Because that's what they measured their battery life off of. Ah, uh, son of a... Do you have to like buy the upgrade or do you just ch- configure it to run at 120 in the OS? I wonder. I, I think that's probably what it is. Um, yeah. But they probably base battery life statistics off of 60. Yeah. Okay. That's bullshit. But you know what? Like, why is this? Why is this a thing, dude? Why aren't we just like, y- it's VRR? Like, why not just VRR? Because not every screen can support VRR. Okay. So it's basically like, a crap <laughs> like come on dude that sucks so like like having to so manually like, toggle i guess i don't know well like that's the thing right like like get to manually toggle on your computer like like i don't know i like, don't know I get like it. apple made that big deal of, of 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 their vrr on their phone but like samsung since the note 20 ultra has had a screen that can go from one hertz to 120 hertz and like they haven't talked about it anymore right. it's just expected right like it's i don't know yeah, I don't know. I kind of just wish there were VR uh, in everything. Give me everything with VR, but I get it. I mean, you know, it's not a bad idea to run like 60 hertz or whatever. My buddy has a laptop, and it's like uh, it's like 165 hertz or some weird shit. But like when you unplug it, it like goes to 60 hertz, and it That's locks weird. frame rate to like 60. Like that's where it's if like I was running a benchmark, it was really neat. Actually. I thought it was kind of cool. Like I was running like a, uh, was a Unigen heaven benchmark. I always run that shit. And then, uh, I like unf- superposition or, yeah, or, or no, heaven. just heaven. Yeah. Oh, oh, the old boy. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I always run the old boy cause it's like, I don't know. It's easy. And I, I'm just so used to seeing it and how it performs. Um, is that the one with like the dragon? Or yeah. The tessellation dragon? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I ran it. And like when I unplugged it from power, it like it frame capped to sixty, changed the refresh to sixty, and I was like, "Why does this look so like kind of?" Actually, I think it frame rate limited to thirty, dude. I think it did wow. that. I was like, "What?" And then I plugged it in, and it was like it just like kind of seamlessly uncapped it. And I was like, "Oh, that's kind of cool, actually," because like you know, gaming on battery life kind of sucks, you know. Yeah, uh, and you can configure like in the settings for it. It was like an ASUS laptop, and uh, really, yeah, yeah, was, you can change all that. So I was like, oh, that's really cool. It was like the uh, the the ASUS like Zephyr thing, whatever. Oh, that's pretty ASUS. neat. It was like the yeah the newer ones, but they, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool because like gaming on battery doesn't really work. But yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> off topic, but this uh. Yeah, I don't really care about the the problem with the Surface laptops for me. Like these guys, they don't really work well on the lap. Like you can't use them on the lap. No. Like they they're all floppy and wobbly, and like they you know they the screens don't hold themselves up. They got to be propped up, and if they're on your legs. Like yeah, that's not really a sturdy surface, right? Yeah. So, what uh, 
Pull this back up real quick. What uh, integrated graphics are those processors using in there? Well, it's the Surface Pro and uh, tech specs. Yeah, I just want to see what integrated graphics they're using. Yeah, Intel oh, Iris. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so the latest. Yeah, and I cool. mean they had Intel Iris graphics on the uh, Studio also. So if you were not using the GPU ones, you could you would just run the Intel Iris. Cool. Which I you know I, I haven't really been tracking integrated graphics. But I haven't either, but it's nice to see that they're using the latest. Well, I, I need integrated graphics to be better. Like, we're in the world with the M1, dude. And it, yeah. it can do graphics, dude. Like, it can do graphics. Like, integrated, not terribly. Yeah. I mean, and it does it with a very low power budget and everything. It's it's insane. Like, the M1 to me, like, whenever I see laptops like this, I, I inevitably compare them to the M1 laptops, the Macs. Yeah. And I just, I, to me, the these always disappoint now, to me. Yeah. No, I, I could definitely see that. But at the same time, you're also taking a hit in compatibility just by running Mac OS. So, like, there are some people yeah. who are who are forced by the software that they have to run to, to get a, a, a different product. No, I totally get that. Like, I understand. I think if you're in, if you need Windows, right, like, obviously, you're going to look at those options. Um, and... I get it. Um, a lot of stuff does run on Mac, though. Like, I'd say if if you had the option and, like, the, the Mac... I mean, the Mac's a great option. It really is for so yeah. many people. Uh, most software can run on it, right? I mean, unless you really need the pin support, like, the, the features that are, like, very specific to all this stuff. It's like, whatever. But I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about about the Microsoft event, dude. I've kind of, like... Not really hyped about it. I'm not not hyped. I'm just like, meh. Eh, it's kind of what I expect from Microsoft. Yeah. So. No, no. I, I mean, I think the bezels on the new Surface Pro 8 look cool. But that, yeah, that's about it for me. Yeah, I mean, the studio, I mean, that was obviously the highlight kind of product. Uh, the laptop studio. And I mean, it's cool. It is cool. But I don't know if it's... Uh, I don't know if it's for me. It has the screen gimmick. I wonder if the touchpad's actually better. But uh, other than know. that, I don't know. Go back up for a second. Go back up for a second. Okay. What are you looking for? I, I, I've never seen it closed, but like you can definitely see the hinge on the lid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks good. This thing looks good. It does I, look I good. mean, I don't know. I'm really excited to see people get their hands on it. Like once Linus and them get their hands on it, it's it's gonna be like okay, yeah, I can, you know. Yeah, but see Linus the, is now biased on laptops, so he is now biased. Yeah, Linus uh, partnered with who the heck are they? Shit, Framework. Frameworks. Yeah, yeah, Framework laptops. Very neat. Very neat. I know. So let's talk about Framework real quick, dude. We Very don't really have neat. a. What do you think about Framework? Do you know? I think uh, it's stupid. Yeah. What? I think it's stupid. What do you mean? We've gone over this. I don't think it's stupid. I think it's awesome. So sure, sure, it's awesome, but it's also not awesome. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me. It's, it's let me let me bring the viewers, the listeners, just, up to speed, dude. Go ahead. What what is it? Someone put a bunch of USB C Thunderbolt ports on a laptop and then used the cut tool in like SolidWorks to put them under the laptop. Oh my god, and then dude! Make, no, and then make modules you're on. not getting the. That's point. literally what it is. You're not getting the point, is. dude. That's not the point. That, that's What's just a Tell feature. That's just Tell a feature, point. dude. That's just one of the features, dude. The point is this. You can take it apart. You can swap parts. It has, you can take it apart in your laptop. Go to ifixit.com. No, you, they, have, they, have, they have a teardown for every laptop. Listen, my dude. It's not true. It's not how it works. This one actually, you know, there's no glue. It's all screws. Listen, listen. With enough will and desire, you can take anything apart. Yeah, but... This one's like legit, like, like doesn't play games. Has like instructions on everything. Well, I would want one to play games. So, uh, listen, <laughs> I guess it technically doesn't play games. It's kind of integrated no. graphics. Yeah, no. So, but the idea, like, like, look, look, the idea yeah. is a it's a semi modular laptop. You can put the ports you want in. You can install the memory you want. You can install third-party memory. You can install third-party SSD, thing... third-party Wi-Fi controller. When you configure it now, you can decide what you want. 
processors. That's the only thing that's really fixed. So you kind of like the say only you thing, go with the best one. And battery, right? Like I can't configure a bigger battery. Well, no, but you could swap the, the battery. Ba you can but... replace the battery. You'd have to buy one, probably from Framework. But you can replace the battery. That's the whole point. Look, you don't need to buy a Wi-Fi card. You don't need to buy storage. You don't even be, need memory. You don't need an operating system. Yeah, but it still somehow works works out to be more than a Dell XPS of, of, of similar configuration with warranty. I don't think so, dude. Let me see. I did the comparison. Bring it up. Well, hold on. I'm configuring my laptop right now, dude. Oh, okay. So it won't let me check out. Is that what the problem is? What, what's wrong here? I'm clicking it. I don't want anything. I don't know. They don't want me to buy it clearly because it doesn't. Oh, it's at the bottom. Okay, I'm just blind. So, f like the cheapest one I can get is like fourteen forty nine. Yeah, but it's unusable because you click none on power adapter. And well, you can bring card. your own power adapter too. I guess it's USB C. I guess. No one knows. Look at that, dude. I don't need any of that shit, man. Expansion cards. Like this is the thing you think is a gimmick. Yeah, dude. My MacBook does the same thing, just less less elegantly. You said it yourself, less elegantly, dude. Yeah, but who cares? These things are cheap. Look, I get Bro. to pick right now. I got four Bro, ports. I could go on Amazon and buy uh, a, a, dongle? A, a, a Hutu dongle for the cost of one of those boys. 20 bucks, it's going to be good? It, I use it all the time. It is $39. Yeah, but what if you don't want to carry a dongle, dude? What if you just want, um, I want a USB... Uh, I, I, I have to carry a dongle all the time because there is no CF Express reader on any of these things. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be awesome. They got but a if you uh, give me, SD, so, 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 micro SD. So like, that's kind of my problem, right? Like, like This would be cool if I could literally pick my IO. And I mean, honest to God, pick my IO. Like if I wanted, you, you, you know, like, yeah. like, but like something really off the wall. Like an XLR port. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I wanted something unique, this would be awesome. But it's literally the same IO that yeah. that that like it, like that just comes on anything. I you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I would think like I'm kinda upset this isn't like two USBs in one module. USB C's. Like it's it just seems mm. like kind of dumb. It's like a USB C extension. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I know. It doesn't make any it, sense. To man. me, that's dumb. The storage yeah. ones, it's the expansion. Dumb. It's dumb. Yeah, it's they're dumb. probably like really slow. Like, that's probably like really crappy storage, though, if it's fitting inside that little boy. Yeah. Like, that's not like an M.2, dude. That's like USB storage. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have any cash either. So. <laughs> like USB yeah. storage, dude. It is, dude, because like uh, the, the size of it alone tells you there's no onboard cash on that drive. Yeah, I that's know. stupid. I don't know. Um,. So no, 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 what? no. We're buying a full dick laptop because the average consumer is not like, I'm going to bring my own Wi-Fi card. No one's going to say that. Okay, so you just think this? there's no market for this kind of laptop that's like no, no. Uh, focused on like... I think there's a market for it, but there's not but, the, but there's not a big enough market for it to have meaningful penetration. Maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, I mean, yeah, but is, is that the real measure of success here? Like, do you think this is a failure... I think the measure get, of like, success of any business is to push as many units as possible. Like, um, like say, <laughs> you know what I mean? here's like, what I think. Yeah, obviously. But like, think about, I'm thinking about this, like from my perspective, like, why do I think this is cool? Like, I think that if I want to load up Linux on something like this seems like a really cool option for that. Like it just like, I don't have to. Why? Why does this seem like a cooler option than like a Lenovo? Because I don't like Lenovo. Like, I, Lenovo has been a part of, like, security breaches and, like, fucking putting backdoors and laptops and shit. Fuck I, Lenovo. I, I just pick Lenovo as, like, a random company. Like, like not Okay, okay. Lenovo, so you're saying, or, like, like, Dell, like, said, XPS. Yeah, anything, so like, yeah. Well, those are expensive. Again, and bring up a Dell XPS if, 13 <laughs> if and, my, and, and compare it to your framework. Okay. That's going to take me a minute, but, yeah. But your your <laughs> argument is like an XPS thirteen versus a framework, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's pull it up. You know what? You know what the framework's not going to have Dell's bloatware and spyware. Okay, so You're, it's a computer. <laughs> it's a computer. Okay, Format so it, let's, talk about, let's talk about let's talk about equivalent. So hold on. Yeah, i seven. Let's just put i seven. Fucking this one. What's the difference? Uh, this one's like a eleven eighty five G seven. Can they I do the one. same thing? Yeah, yeah, right there. There you go. Okay. Boom, boom. Windows 10 home because I'm trying to save money. 
Uh, this is bring your own RAM, but like, let's just configure these with like 16 gigs of RAM, like two sticks. Can I do that? Yeah. Yep. Right there. Boom. Um, so 16 gigs of RAM, uh, let's say hard drive, like let's look at the equivalents. So say I go like 250 gig Western digital black NVMe, yeah. let's say 256. Okay. Video card. This has Intel Iris graphics. Yeah. LCD, I got different options. So it's like the same price. This one's also brighter. This one's also brighter. Is it? So we'll Go back this... down. Go back down. Look I haven't the even configured down, the dude. Wi-Fi card yet. Huh? Yeah, dude. Let me put the <laughs> Wi-Fi card in. This was a... Uh... You don't put in your storage. What? What? What happened to my storage? Did I not Go put ahead. it in? Okay. Memory. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're No good. operating system. Well, yeah, I don't want one. Yeah, dude. Look at this. Look at this, That's if dude. I want one, though. You okay. picked one on the Dell. Yeah, I have to pick one on the Dell. They don't make you... Well, well, you still okay. need one. So you're saying that, yeah, but this one's a bigger laptop. Like, the display, well, dude. Like, well, well, what, what's, what's the display size? Uh, where's the specs for this thing? <laughs> Great experience already for the end user. Hold on. Framework? How do I fucking tell? Where is it? Okay, okay, okay. Look. Same size. 15, it's the same size, uh, and it's less than 400 5? nits. Dude, that's and a it's whole less point. Than... This is 13. This is 13.5, then. And it's less and it's less than four hundred nits. Let's look at the screen resolutions. Nineteen twenty by twelve hundred, or do I get twenty two fifty six by fifteen oh four, dude? Come on. Look. If I if I want like to go higher bro, res, bro, bro. I'm gonna be adding Pick a the lot OLED of the OLED Infinity Touch and see how much that is. Hold on, I gotta figure out which one that is. This one? But pick the OLED boy. Yeah, but oh now my it's Lord. switching my That's shit a... up. Hold on. Oh, my... No, it didn't. Hold on. Hold on. I'm it gave me the five twelve now, I think. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. So let's go. Let's let's go. Back, let's go back. Dude. Let's go back. Okay. Wi-Fi cheap. Uh, Five hundred gig. Sixteen. Uh, no, it's a sixteen two. by one, bud. You, yeah. You're killing me there, dude. I got Windows it. Windows ten. So seventeen sixty-five versus what? Nineteen. Look at that, dude. That's oh my expensive. god! But you're but you're getting a four K OLED with <laughs> touch. Yeah. How much is the uh, if I go with the crap? screen 1669 no 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 that's still the touch boy go with the crap screen on the left go, the, go, go with that boy yeah 1569 1769 no. yeah dude yeah the yeah. screen's better Thumbnail. so no, you're getting no, what you're paying you don't for. know that it's what do you care about dude it's less than 400 nets they don't even tell you how much it is they just say it's it's less than 400 right. it could be 100 and they're not wrong well it's definitely not that people have said the display is nice people have said the display is nice. People have said the display on the Switch is nice, dude. Those people are wrong. Except for maybe the OLED Switch that's coming. What's the battery life on the Dell? <sighs> dude, I, does it? it's not going to no, say that. Forget it. Forget, forget that. It. Forget that. Forget it. Look, okay. I'm just saying this is a different beast than the Dell. This is a different beast. Okay. This is a modular beast. Ask me which one I'd rather have. You would probably take the framework. No, I wouldn't. I want the fucking Dell, dude. <laughs> I get the fucking Dell, dude. <laughs> I'd get the well, Dell. Well, the Dell is so sleek, dude. Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. The framework, like, obviously, I respect what they're doing. I like that. I want to get one and put Linux on it. I'd get the All Dell. Right. I like it. I respect what they're doing, but there's no reason to buy that over a Dell XPS 13. <laughs> I'm saying, like, I'd get the also, Dell. Also, I, I thought it was funny that in Linus's video <sighs> where he talks about, like, I legally have to disclose this or whatever, the bezel fell off twice on the framework laptop, and then uh, he tried to apply it off, like, well, it's detachable. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it literally fell off twice when he was just using it. <sighs> like, I get it. Like, everyone's... Like, this right to repair movement is kind of, like, picking up steam. Like, people, it's the cool thing to talk about now. You've yeah. got, like, major publications bringing up Lewis Rossman and, like, you know, yeah. yeah, you got all kinds of people, like, getting on board the hype train for right to repair. And it's actually a great thing. I'm really happy that it's getting more public, uh, you know, publicity. Sure. Uh, sure. So the framework laptop kind of goes along with that same hype, right? Like, it's kind of riding those, that hype train. Uh, and I think that that's a great thing. You know, they're going to offer the uh, for free, uh, which is great. You know, like you don't have to like find some like ghetto way to get the uh, uh, laptops, uh, you know, uh, 
I keep saying specs, but it's the blueprint. It's the schematics. Right. right. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying to figure that out, but I'm glad that they're going to bring that up and, you know, uh, uh, give that to the repair shops for free. I'm happy with that. So the, I, like, I like the mission. I like the idea. It's, it's not really probably going to sell. <laughs> it's probably not going to sell. Yeah. I don't think so either. I don't so, think so either. It's a shame. Real quick. Um, done talking looks about like framework. I'm mo- yeah. looks like I'm mobile streaming now, but yeah, I'm not. You um, look like ass, but whatever. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. It's nothing different. So, uh, you know, it's kind of par for the course. But yeah, we'll. Uh, wow, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, this uh, guy, dude. Yeah. So let's talk about cameras, dude. So we've been talking about cameras a lot lately. All the time, man. It's like, uh, it's kind of our thing. And it's funny because I have you talking more about video now. It's yeah, like, weird. Weird. You're like super Bizarro into photography, world. obviously, like hardcore photographer type of guy. But now you're like starting to itch that, you're getting an itch for video. Is that your. I am. Uh, I am. Uh, it's not souring my love for, for photography. I just want to do both. Yeah. Uh, same here, dude. That's how I feel. Like, obviously, I got my camera for, to- for photography, and uh, I've been using it for both, and I'm really happy to be using it right now for this. But, like, I love, like, just, like, you ever look at some really good B-roll, and you're like, mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, dude. You know, Peter like, McKinnon all the time. Yeah, you watch Peter McKinnon. Like, obviously, you know, MKBHD does some crispy videos. Um, yeah, all right. Know. On that topic, real quick, his yeah. iPad mini intro. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, dude. Oh. I was like, how did he do that? Like, I'm sitting yeah. here like, how did he grab yeah, it? Yeah, I was and trying to figure it. it out. Yeah. Ah, man. Like, I obviously, they did something in post to, like, clean up whatever they had holding it up. Or, like, yeah. they did yeah. something. But I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, they, they did something fun, you know? I, I'm all about that, dude. Yeah, so, that was awesome. That was cool. Always crispy stuff, dude. So I always want to make my own crispy stuff. I'm like my stuff. current video. <laughs> yeah, you, ignore your current video, dude. <laughs> I'm like a crispy like, cream right now. Yeah, dude. It's okay. Uh, you know, it's not a Dunkin' Donuts, but, you know, you're good. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. So video is fun. Like, it's it's a whole different set of skills. A whole new world. Like, obviously, composition still matters. But, like, it's kind of different. Like, you got to think about, like, you know, okay, my shutter speed has to be, like, double my frame rate. Like, Yeah, you know, two over one. You get to think a lot about bit depth. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's a lot of technical um, stuff with videos. Like, um, like I have 8-bit eight uh, camera. Like, it shoots 8-bit. And then you got to think about your video codec and stuff and, like, your gamma. There's, like, a lot involved, you yeah. know? And I'm just now, like, starting to – like, I know – like, I, like, whenever I get a new camera or a new piece of tech, like, even a new TV, like, I'll go online and I'll find out what everyone says is the best settings, right? Yeah. But I might not know why. I'm just now getting to the point where I'm starting to know why the I cameras. need to have my camera the way, like, set the way it is. So, like, whenever I'm shooting in video on my Sony, you know, I'm shooting in uh, HLG3, which is giving me the widest dynamic range. And it's also making it kind of easier to grade than like a log, you know, uh, picture profile. And then like um, I can take that footage and it's not graded. It's obviously very flat. I'm shooting into a, it's like a flat profile. And then I throw it in a resolve. Then I have to do a color grade. So now I'm learning how to do a color grade. Um, you know, I'm not even using corrective LUTs for what I okay. do. So. So now when you, when you edit video in HLG or, or when I send you footage in log, yeah. uh, do you, you, you even use a base LUT or do you just do it all by hand? Well, I tried. So like when you gave me your, uh, footage for the moon, Which one? Okay. Uh, you gave me, so he sent me 8k, uh, like 12 bit raw video. It was pretty awesome. And I was like, hell yeah, boy. dude. Big it was like, how filed, big, dude. how many gigs, dude? Like it was 44 like 44 gigs for a two, for, for, but like two and a half minutes. Here's the interesting part too. Most yeah. of that footage was black. So yeah, like, I know, dude. But like, it's still, it's still. So I took that footage in Resolve and I got to color grade it. I tried to apply the stock uh, Canon uh, log to Rec. Seven Hundred Nine LUT, and it killed the blacks. Like it raised the blacks, and you can't like the it, LUT applies. I don't think it applies to yeah. So you can't fix what the LUT changed. Like it's, it's like, it's, um, kind of permanent. This is one thing when I teach you resolve later today, it kind of works in layers. And if you mess something up in an earlier, so layer, it's just like an ACL kind of, yeah, sort of. So you want to make sure that you're like, 
doing it in the right layer. Like you're not stacking. It's it's really weird. But yeah, like for your footage, what I ended up doing is not using that and just manually doing it. And if you know how to look at the 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 waveform, the scope, like you can do a lot with just flat mm. raw footage. Like if you're somebody shot in like S log three or like you're you're shooting in C log three, I think. C log three, yeah. So uh, you know, if you're shooting in a very flat, uh, wide dynamic range profile and you know what you're doing in the waveform at the scopes, like you can really, it doesn't matter if you have a corrective LUT or not, like you kind of know what you're doing and, and that's, what's kind of awesome. But there's just so much involved with video. Like, honestly, I think you're going to be great in resolve because like, you know how to do f like photography stuff. Like, you know how to use like uh, Lightroom capture one, you know how to like, you know, make, you know, make your own look. Uh, you know how to correct the image. You know how to work with high dynamic range already. So, you know what I mean? Like, I think yeah, it'll, we'll be, see. I think we'll it'll see. be good. I mean, it's uh, a little... Does, re the, does Resolve have a magnetic timeline? Because that's pretty annoying in Final Cut. When Death. it snaps? You, yeah. you turn it off with one click or one key press, okay. yeah. I'm like, sometimes it's nice or sometimes it's not, you know? Yeah, you can turn that off. There's like, uh, it links stuff together. Like, uh, and you can turn that off too. That always bothers me. I, you know, so it's like, easy. so like one thing that the kind of sucks about Final Cut and, and, and like, I'm sure you, I'm sure you maybe are not familiar with it. Maybe you are. I don't know. But like, let's say, let's say you edit our podcast. Okay. Yeah. And you go to edit out a section that you don't want. Okay. It'll create a blank frame there. It won't magnetically move that part down. And then you have to go in and control delete the blank frame. Like or wait, a command delete. Sorry. Wait, you have to delete it. Like it makes yeah. like a black spot, basically. Mm -hmm. Like what? Yep. That's yeah. Weird. So like, so like, if you put in a five minute piece of a roll, okay, let's like mm. just say like a five minute piece of a roll, and then you cut out from maybe two minutes and fifty seconds to two minutes and fifty five seconds, mm. that five seconds will just be a blank frame. Okay. So yeah. Then, so 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 and like it'll be separated, but but then if you want to remove that blank frame, you have to press command delete delete won't do anything on it yeah but like so it's just odd right like, like it, if you're in the editor in davinci resolve and you have a clip and you cut it in half or like say you cut a piece out and, or like mm -hmm. say you make two cuts like this on the timeline you have this gap that's like 10 seconds you can click on that it'll select it and now you have mm -hmm. two options you hit delete and it's going to take the clip and like move it right okay so it's gonna it's gonna make it so it's like you cut that piece out but it's gonna there's no gap now because it moved, the, it physically moved on the timeline the rest of that footage to make it no gap. Or if you do Control X to do a cut, now it will have an empty space. So you have different ways you can handle that. And uh, so for me, gosh, hold on, I gotta fix something. I gotta turn off this sound. I got like element notifications. Hold on, because they they come into my fucking. Is that you or is that someone else? Not me, dude. No, it wasn't you. You know, I have I'm Element casted. make a unique sound for you. Oh. So I'm like, oh, that's Randy. Ignore it. I was going to say, is that I'm so you can ignore kidding. me? Then? I'm just kidding. But yeah, so that's how you can do it. You just kind of cut it or you can, or you cut it and there's a, a blank space or you hit delete and it actually snaps it. But the problem with delete is like, if you have a lot of stuff, like say you have a m music track, unless sure. you have that track locked, it's going to delete that piece too. And it's like, no, you don't want to do that. Right. So. You, uh, I'm going to teach you the quirks. Like every piece of software has their own like little quirks that you got to like figure out. And then you're like, Oh, okay. And then you can work around it. And that resolves no different. It's got its own quirks. We're going to figure that out. I want to like start at the actual beginning though. Right. Like I want to learn how to like, how, how to properly manage different projects, you know? So. Yeah, dude. Oh man. I'm excited to teach you then. I, you know, uh, I can kind of just give you like, a lot of like little tips that are going to be like, I wish I knew early. And, mm -hmm. uh, I think that that's going to be pretty Sweet. beneficial for you. But I mean, that's just video editing, you know? Um, I want to talk about like cameras real quick. Sure. So like, I, I love cameras. Dude. They're like my favorite. favorite can I ask hobby. a weird question? Like, okay. So question. just to give the, 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 uh, podcast a little context, uh, I've been interested in a new camera. Like I have the a seven three, the from Sony and it's a great camera. Great camera. Uh, awesome it honestly camera. is a great budget camera. It's like two under two thousand dollars. I don't body. know if it's. A, I I wouldn't call it a budget camera, but it's a great camera. <laughs> it's a great entry level full frame camera. That's better said, right? Like obviously it's not budget. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's not if at you're all. going for full frame, I would consider like, maybe the a six thousand a budget camera. Yeah. 
you know. No, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Like when it comes to cameras, I found that I, 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 you know, you know, what's funny, you know how like there's always diminishing returns mm -hmm. in products, like whether it be TVs well, or whatever. Applies for cameras too. It does. But like, I feel like you don't hit it very quickly. No. Like no. even so, in like, thousands of dollars, like you get your money's yeah. worth out of these bodies, out of these lenses, out of this, like it's no lenses joke. for sure. Lenses for sure. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Right. Because I'm trying to think of a really good example. So, uh, if you look at like, a like a, like a Canon C 500 Mark two yeah. versus a Canon C 300 Mark three, uh, you're basically paying the extra money for feature sets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, like you're not paying more for image quality at that point. I guess that's the point that I was making about, yeah. you know, so there are diminishing I mean, returns. Like you have to be aware. That, I mean, like, that we're talking happen. about like a $9,000 versus a $15,000 camera, yeah. but still, but like, yeah, but like, I'm saying like up to like, I don't know, like even in the $5,000 body range, like I feel like, you're gonna get what you pay for. You get, you 100 percent get what would get. Like even get, the A1, get, get like for. I know it's 6,500 dollars, but you get like things like you might not need them, but you get things that like no nothing else has at that price I feel range. Like, you know, I I love the A1. I do. I, again, I, I I just have a hard time justifying it over the R5's cost. I totally understand that. Um, it depends on your use case. I'd say if you're a photographer. Unless you need those, that crazy, like, what is it? Like 30, like 30 FPS, uh, like with the E shutter, like 30 FPS, yeah, 30 FPS. Like, unless you're doing like, you really have that use case for it. Like, yeah, that it's, it's a waste. Like yeah. for video, but, like, it's a little different. Even so but, like, 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 like the R5 is 20, you mm. know? So like, uh, if you can't crucify something with 20 frames per second, yeah. like if 20 frames per second can't get you the shot, that's probably on you. Right. I think where the A1 has a big advantage is um, it has a faster readout. Mm -hmm. And 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 when I say readout, I mean the time it takes for the sensor to dump its 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 image data to the internal cache. Right. So that um, that reduces things like distortion from the e shutter because the shutter reads top down. Right. It's so like the faster the shutter can read from top down, the less image distortion you'll have in fast moving objects. Right. Like Sony displays this a lot, especially on their A9 page with like a golf swing. Like if your if your shutter readout is slow, not your shutter speed, but your shutter readout, the golf the the, the golf club will look bent. Mm -hmm. You know. So like the A1 definitely has an advantage in in sensor readout. And if that's something you need, yeah. that's awesome. But if you if you're yeah, but like a lot of times, like if you had an older camera, like obviously the A one's great with the E shutter, it can do it. But like if you just use your shutter, you don't really worry about that, right? Like that's the that's the whole idea. Like it, you don't have to worry yeah. about like the rolling shutter issues, like where no, you, get you have to bendy. worry about having use mechanical. Well, rolling shutter is like yeah. a, that's a video a, a issue, thing. Yeah, right? It's a video but issue. it's 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 sort of the same thing with an E shutter almost. It is because it reads top down. Uh, however, however. Uh, I think I've had to phrase this. E shutter works a bit differently in that regard. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. So, um, so that's why if you look at like the R5 and compare it to the A1, the rolling shutter is almost similar because you're 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 using lower shutter speeds when you take video, generally speaking, right? Right. Like if you do fast moving sports, you could be shooting at one two thousandth or one one thousandth or one four thousandth. Right. That's where you're going to notice the A1 pull ahead. But when you're, if you're talking about rolling shutter at like one over 48 or one over 60 or, you know, something like that, you're not going to really see a big difference. Right. But when you get into like one two fiftieth, one four hundredth, one eight hundredth, one two thousandth, that's where you're really going to see the faster readout of the A1 really start to pull ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Aren't the uh, raw files from Canon, uh, like the R5, like smaller too? I think I was looking at a lot of comparison videos, like compressed raw, uncompressed raw, like all this stuff. So, like, I have the option to shoot in raw light, which is like a compression raw. Yeah. raw. I don't do it, obviously. Yeah. But, like, I do have the option to shoot compressed. Okay. Uh, do you shoot uncompressed? Uh, is that... Uh, I do. Okay. I yeah. do. I shoot uncompressed raw for photos and video just because... Um, People say that it's similar, but like storage isn't an issue for me, right? So like, it's like why you might as would well I... get yeah, the best exactly clarity. right, exactly right. Yeah, but are there so, compromises in like say, um, 
like your uh, how fast you can shoot or anything, or is it just like there's on... a compromise in the buffer size yeah. if you take photos, obviously, because you know it's it's basically your buffer is X amount, right? right. So, like, so, so like just say your buffer is 100, you know, round round number, and uncompressed <laughs> is 20 megabytes, and compressed is 10. Obviously, your buffer would not fill up as fast. Question: If you so shot compressed, you have a CF Express card though; it writes pretty quick, right? I, I, I do have a CF Express Type B. Yeah, doesn't correct. it like so buffer matter less since you have faster write speeds? Or it does, but one of my problems with the R5 is the secondary card is an SD card, mm -hmm. the UHS two card. So the buffer so, is basically going off of your slowest storage, or so if I shoot sequential cards, yeah. right? That's where it'll shoot the CF until the CF is full, and I'll switch over to the. That's SD. what I meant, like sequential. I right? can I can pretty much chain gun shots if I just write to the SD. Yeah, you, you or, know or what to I mean? the like, CF Express. Like, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I could just pretty much just, just just spray and pray if I shoot to the CF Express. If I shoot mirrored, I could probably get off about two hundred and fifty shots, yeah. maybe, which is still ridiculous, right? right. Like. Like if you're holding down a burst for longer than five seconds, you're not a photographer. You're you're yeah. you're not out there taking photos. No. You're just out there just just having fun. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, so like, there's it like one use case like that you could shoot that fast. It's if you're gonna turn it into video for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but other um, or for that long rather. But yeah, like uh, you don't need to do that. You shoot AK. So, <laughs> so the only real reason that like, uh. I, I could see that being an issue is like if you're doing something like motorsports yeah or like something like that where like there's multiple cars coming around the angle and you want to get every car so you're like so you're like three second burst 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 like that will fill up then obviously you right. know what I mean because it can't clear the buffer that fast I mean uh, the a1 but like has like dual CF Express right that's yeah, sick. it has it has dual CF Express type a yeah which is slower than type B ooh interesting um, I don't know. I think I'd rather have the dual of like, and isn't it like a but dual type of slot too? Like you could put SDs in them. Yeah, I was yeah. just gonna say. So, 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 like, here's the nice part about that is the the form factor of CF Express Type A can share a slot with SD cards. That's kind of cool. That is neat. That, that is neat. That is neat. But but it Do is I slower care about than it? Type I mean, B boy. Yeah, maybe if I'm taking photos, it's not such a big deal. I, for video, I think it's absolutely like necessity almost to get the CF. What is that? Uh, like for video, like AK, like. I would want to so, have like so you can't by default shoot AK or an SD card. It just doesn't have the right for it. I think that you can on the A1. I might be wrong with the maybe you can the way but, that but it the what handles it. But the AK is 10 bit compressed. Yeah. yeah. Versus 8K 12 bit raw on the R5. So on the R5, I can't write to an SD card at all. It's just too, it, it, it's just too much data. Can you shoot 10 bit 10 bit compressed too? Yeah, that would be raw light. Yeah, which I mean. That it might be sufficient. Like I don't know. Maybe not. I'm gonna have to do some tests. I know. I know. You know but I mean? but again, it's like it's like why not? You know what I mean? Huge. Yeah. Because like, dude, like that's a lot of storage, dude. That is that a lot of storage. But again, sixty some gigs, but, dude. But again, less than we, five minutes through... of storage. Like you have less than five minutes of storage yeah. on a hundred twenty eight yeah, like, gig CF I, Express I, I, Type I, B, dude. Yeah. Like oh, fuck. Again, it's it's a it's a bit it's a beefy boy. It's but again, nuts. So no like, one's shooting at K. No one is doing that. I'm just it's, saying it's, it's like, basically, well, I want to shoot AK, but maybe you're right. You know what I want to shoot? Flex, dude. So if I had the R5, I would shoot 4K high. Did you see that? 4K HQ? Yeah. Why? Uh, it's just higher quality. It takes like the 8K downsampled. Mm -hmm. It's 8K downsampled 4K. It doesn't, yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't do like the weird line skip 4K that has like see, the like, artifacting. I found one person who, who, who said it line skips and it's your boy. Yeah. I haven't seen a report of that anywhere else. I and mean, he, if he's it, got tests, dude. Like, he showed it. Uh, I don't disagree with him. I yeah. don't. I don't disagree with him. Whether or not, where, like, anyone cares other I, than, like, where him. Where I have a problem with it is, is if you look at R5 footage on the internet of people who have shot actual film with, with, with the R5, it, it, it's it, it, it's, hell, it looks man. great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jared Poland, yeah, like, like, that shit looks so good, yeah. dude. It's, yeah, dude, it looks crazy. It looks so like, good. Like, the colors, like, everything. Like, uh... Peter McKinnon just 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 did a yeah. commercial shoot for Can Am. Yeah, for Can Am on the R five, like like a professional commercial, and you it can looks do it so good. Yeah, it looks so good. No, it does. So, so like here's the thing. Like I yesterday I almost bought the R five. I was really close. If they, I think if Best Buy had glass that was good, I would have bought have it. That the trigger, day. man, because this camera is is one of the happiest things I've ever spent money on. And, There's only one and, thing holding me back at this point. It's probably. 
I want to stay Sony just because I have the a7 III already. Yeah. And I want to be yeah. able to use any new lenses I buy with uh, the both. a7 III and the new camera. Because, like, I want to have two bodies, one for Amanda, one for me. Mm-hmm. And, like, it, whenever we go out together, if we both want to be photography bros and, like, take photos. Yeah, that's cool. And, that's you cool. Know, I did have Kelly get the RP for that reason, so we could share glass. Yeah, know. yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, right? So, like, that's the only thing. But if I look at what Sony offers that I want... So, let me ask you a question. Okay, sure. If you were not into a camera ecosystem, mm. would you buy the R5? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? I think so, because... Like, it, like, like let's pretend for a second you yeah. have, like, the A6000. You know, like like a crop sensor e-mount camera and you didn't have any full frame glass, which you have bought the R5. Well, the thing about the A6000 is you can buy, is it the same mount? It's the same mount, but it's a crop sensor, right? So like Sony has its own line of crop sensor glass for it. Okay. So if I didn't have so, any glass, so I'm I saying like if you had frame Sony, right? Yeah. Right. So I probably still R5 it, yeah. um, you know, because there's a lot of okay. Let me tell you what I found out about the R5. I did a lot of research to see if I could get around the limitations that it has, and I can. There are ways to do it. Um, you can basically there's ways to shoot unlimited 8K. Um, mm-hmm. You know what it turns out like I just watched a video literally before this podcast. A guy is like, okay, you want to use an external recorder, okay? So mm-hmm. you're using the Atomos, whatever, uh, Ninja, Ninja 5, plus. Five Plus, whatever. So you're okay. It, yeah, like say you just want to capture 4K, you got even more options now, right? Yeah. Um, like, because he was doing 4K high quality, he did 8K, he did all the tests. If you shoot with a dummy battery, you have an external recorder, and I don't even, actually, I don't even think you need a dummy battery, but you kind of, if you're doing a video this long, you probably could. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm still on my normal battery, my, yeah, my, that's my LP6 ENH. Yeah. Um, are you're plugged in at all or USB? No. Oh, wow. No. You're just running it. Uh, yeah. yeah, but you're also not capturing on camera, so it'll last longer. Anyway. No, I'm not. Right, right. Yeah. So like if you're shooting 8K, uh, you can, if you let the, uh, electronic viewfinder and the, the screen, the flip out screen, if you let those shut off, that like dumbs the heat down a lot. It turns out. It's like, if you yeah, let those, uh, like, I saw a video where if you turn out the flippy screen, yeah. You can you can, you can get a few minutes just from doing that. Yeah, so you barely get a little bit. You get like a couple minutes from that. But yeah, letting I, the screen time out. I think out the video I saw black, was like two minutes and two seconds. If you t- if you yeah. turn out the flippy screen, if you turn them, let them turn off, and you just use like the external monitor that you're mm-hmm. using to capture the freaking footage anyway, the ninja. Right. Like, yeah. you don't. It doesn't matter. Like, you can mm-hmm. just leave. Uh, yeah. If you leave the let those screens turn off, like you you can run unlimited 8K. Unlimited yeah. 4K high quality. Which is kind of crazy if you think about it because, like, you're talking about a company mm-hmm. that makes a cinema line. Yeah. They make, you know, like the C500 Mark II is a $15,000 cinema camera. The EOS C70 is a $5,400 cinema camera. Yeah. And I think, if you don't, can you, buy, don't you, yeah, and then, like, it, yeah, go ahead, finish your thought. I was just going to say, like, if you think about it from a cannibalization standpoint of a company wanting to move product and not cannibalize their own line Mm -hmm. the r5 is kind of a insane product for consumers yeah for sure i mean it does so much like the only thing i think they really do to gimp that the product is limit your record time to 30 frames if you're doing in body 30 minutes 30 minutes sorry 30 frames 30 minutes yeah uh but if you're using an external recorder you don't have there's no limit so like and you like for me, if I were to get the R5 and I wanted to use it for video for real, I'd have to to make it work for me. I'd basically have to get the external recorder, and those things aren't cheap. Um, Fourteen hundred dollars, but they're kind of great to have. You know what I mean? They are like, great you to have. Want yeah, like, one like anyway. it's just a nice to have anyway. I think, in my opinion, yeah. I I think if you're really serious about video, you should have one anyway. Yeah. So, you know what's funny? Maybe it's, like maybe in my case, like you know, my computer right here, like I for this type of thing. Like if I wanted to record, I'm recording into OBS and I have a 4K capture card. So, but I'm not yeah. going to be able to like, I mean, it'll look great for the stream, for the podcast, but it, it's not really capturing like the, yeah. you know, I think your problem is, is like, is like if you bought the camera, yeah. okay. And you didn't watch reviews, you bought the camera and you didn't watch Gerald Dundon, and you didn't watch Sherry Poland right. and you didn't watch all that stuff. 
and you were unaware of the 8K limitations or, you know, whatever the R5 lim limitations are, right. I don't think under normal use she would hit them. So I think that uh, you're probably right. But like, like I said, the, you know how I did that test vlog the other day? Um, yeah. Where I had, uh, you know, this thing hooked up. I love that thing, by the way. Yeah, this thing, I the high footage, uh, monopod boy. Um, and I have the... Can you, can you, yeah, just show, show, show me the fluid head a little bit. Does that have a, a, a an arm you can put on there to, for like smooth adjustments where those two little gears oh, are yeah. on the side? I have the right, arm sweet, off of sweet. it right now because... Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, it, I just wasn't sure if it came with it or not. Well, yeah, it does. I just didn't have it on there because it was like already bulky as is. So I was right. like, I'm just going to leave it off. This uh, fluid head isn't like best in class, but for the price and for how big it is, uh, which isn't that big compared to most fluid heads, I think it's uh, something I wanted to have in my kit. So especially for these on the desk sort of things. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like yesterday I did a little vlog test video and, uh, you know, I don't know. I must have recorded for a little over 30 minutes, right? Um, and... I think but you wouldn't be doing that in 8K. No, you no. But here's the thing: 4K high quality is the same as 8K, basically. Um, as far as like how much it overheats your camera. So because it's taking a 8K image and just downsampling it in camera to be 4K, so it's it's still hot as hell, right? So like you're gonna uh, get like 40 minutes, probably out of that, uh, maybe 30 some. I don't know. I forget what the like. There's a lot of things you have to do to make it work. Like you'd have to use an external battery solution, like a dummy battery, external battery solution, the the Ninja, and like then you have like uh, so like crazy uh, runtimes. But here's where I'm at. Two questions. It's probably not one, something I'd run into. You're right. One does does the A1 have a 4K HQ mode? I mean, surely, right? Like it. I, I I'm trying to see. I don't think it does. I don't know how it does its 4K. It might just be it by default it does not. that it does. No, that. it does not. Nope. Well, what does nope. it do? It, it does 4K bend. Bend. So it's yes, bend. It does 4K 10 bit bend. That might not be bad though. Like it, it does might be 4K different. 10 bit bend. No, no, it's capture region is 4.3K. So here are your options on the on 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 on, on the A1. A1. Okay, you can do 4K Super 35, which is a 1.5x crop. No one wants that. You can do 4K. Okay. Okay. Uh, which is a 1.13 crop. No one wants that either. No. What you want is 4K full frame, which is a 4.3K down sample to 4K, or you can do 8K, which is an which is an just 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 just, just an 8K, 8K full frame sample at 10 bit four. Oh, dude, dude, it's only 420 too. Oh, get out of here. Yeah, dude. but oh, the files my. are so much smaller though. Like I can record it's for way. Dude, you can record for five minutes 8K before you're dead. Dude, I don't need twelve zero, bit. Dude. I don't need twelve bit, dude. dude so, so, so four two zero is fine. Here's my problem with this now. Here's 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 my problem with this. Mm. Sony doesn't give you the op uh, the, the option to eight K down sample. They don't. It does not I exist. I just shoot an eight K, dude. <laughs> I just shoot an eight K, dude. Look, look. So I haven't done so enough. So like my point is, is your you're yelling at Canon for giving you a feature other manufacturers don't. No, 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 no. Uh, Listen, they give you the feature, but they have all these, like, caveats, right? They're like, okay, well, it overheats, you know, like, it, it really does. Like, you have to mitigate it. Yeah, but it's not a caveat. It's not a caveat. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a form factor problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but the A1 They could just not it. give you the feature. The... The A1 does it at 420 10-bit, and it still overheats. Okay. Not as fast, okay. but it still overheats. So we, yeah. And there's no 4K HQ option on the A1. So would you rather have the option and the ability to do it through some form or not have the option at all? 4K bend might be good, though. It's not like the 4K same bend as is, line double. 4K, 4K pixel bending is the same as line skipping. I don't know if it's the same as line skipping, is it? I don't know. 4K bending is not good. Well, it's, I don't know. Maybe it's fine. <laughs> maybe it's, Wine skip. Oh my. Maybe it's fine. I don't know. Right. I'm serious. Maybe it is good. I could see you buy the A1 and then put in your VR tiles. 4.3K down sample to 4K. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Look, I don't know. I. How come, you know, 
You got reviewers that are really buying into the AK then. If it if the video was Who? bad. A lot of people like Who's shooting an AK? Well, no, I'm saying sorry, I meant to say if I didn't say it right, people are buying the A1. I don't know if they're shooting an AK. It's a great camera. It's a great camera. Yeah. So why are people buying it? Why like nobody's buying the R5? Why? You mean no one's buying, no one's the, buying R5. the R5? No one's buying the R5, dude. Everyone's buying the R5. Dude, I'm I look. I know that you're like reason- done done. But listen, it's there's, not just there's about a him. reason. There's a reason why people buy the A1. It, one, it's a great camera. It's it, it's arguably probably the best camera out. Okay. Two, uh, a lot of these people for the longest time, Sony was the only option for mirrorless. Yeah. Like so, they already like, have they glass. were the only option. You know, so like if they started off their 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 their, their YouTube channel or their YouTube career with like an A7S2, and then they upgraded to like an FX6 or an FX7, that's still E mount. Yeah. So why wouldn't you get the A1? Because if you're already like Gerald and Dunn or yeah. whomever else it's it is, cheaper in the... money is not an option for them. It's a business expense. Yeah. Okay. So why would they switch ecosystems in that scenario? Right. Well, you know? like in so my like, case, that's like part of the problem is I don't want to switch ecosystems, even though it's not maybe as big a deal for me. I only have two lenses, but um, see for you, it's a, it's a, it's a weird situation because the a one is not worth $3,000 more than the R five in any reality. And I think anyone will tell you that it's, it's, it's not. Yeah. But like, it's not really, it's about, it's not about the body value. It's about like having like, so, so you realistically have one lens. <laughs> what do you mean? I have two lenses. You're gonna buy a new twenty four to seventy. Probably, yeah. The 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 twenty four to seventy GM Mark II is gonna come out probably in twenty twenty two. It's it's like the top rumor on Sony Alpha rumors. So you're saying I'm gonna, gonna buy that? You're either gonna buy that or the Sigma because the twenty four to seventy GM one point is trash. It gets it's beat fine. out by like it's not as good. It gets yeah. beat up by a Sigma. Uh, the Nikon twenty four to seventy is better. The Canon twenty four to seventy is better. The Canon twenty eight to seventy. People say it's one of the best lenses ever made, and it's like having a bag of primes. Okay. So, I mean, um, it doesn't have any like major flaws. It might not be as sharp. It's just as soft. The Sigma. It's just soft. Yeah. It's just soft. And so, so, the, so, so the problem with the twenty four to seventy GM right now is one, it's soft. Two, it doesn't have dual linear motors. So it's slow focusing on the A1 and it's slow focusing on your faster body cameras because yeah. it doesn't have dual, dual, dual linear motors. So somebody's coming out with all of these bodies and now they're, they're, they're what you would call the standard lens mm. can't focus fast enough Yeah, okay. in, some, in some scenarios. And it's also soft. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I mean, I was looking at the so, Sigma. I was close to selling the G Master for the Sigma. Right, right. So, look, so, so I get like, it. I have two you lenses, really have one. Still, you have one S rank. Yeah. The, if Canon had more, if Canon had third party glass, maybe. But like, I, I was thinking about this. I, I was thinking about. I, I was thinking about this the other day too. You have the entire EF lens lineup that 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 is like discount warehouse prices. Yeah, but I don't want to buy that. Why? I want the new. How is lenses. that different than buying a Sigma? Then, uh, all right. Well, then, well, then get an RF lens, and then if you wanted your your your, your cheaper <sighs> alternatives, I gotta you buy, buy like I gotta buy, buy like, EF now. Oh my god! I got like eight grand of lenses. I need like I don't yeah, need. I do too. Like five grand of lenses. Realistically, for what you do right now, you can get the one and done lens at fifteen to thirty five two point eight, and you would be happier than a pig and poop. Okay. <laughs> you would you would maybe that would be your one and done lens and then for you you could probably skip the 24 to 70 because you really don't need that range and then what I get you could instead get i need an 85 too. too okay i love well, the 85 that, so much that's my point that, that's my point so so the if you came to me and said randy here's my credit card build me out a kit yeah and and, and money was no object i would get you the r5 mm-hmm. the 15 to 35 2.8, which would give you eight stops of IBIS, the 51.2, and the 85.12, and then you would be good. Yeah, no, I'm not good, because you got to get me the freaking Atomos Ninja whatever. You got to get me the dummy battery. All right, you can't forget that shit. That's like 800 bucks or some shit. Come on. You're not recording an AK. You're not. No, I'm recording in Why 4K can't... HQ, dude. 
why can't you just record in 4K 24 10 bit? I could. Yeah. But I want to record in 4K HQ though. You can't do that on Sony anyway. Yeah, I just record 8K 422 10 bit. I'm good. It's 420. 420. Shit. Shit. All right. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I, I got to do some more research because, like, you the R5 you obviously has still been an option. Like, I, I just I didn't mean, want to spend, like, the amount to get up and running on it. Like, I just have to buy a body one, and go. One way or another. But realistically, you're going to replace your 24 to 70 at some point. You are. Like, like you, you, you just are. And yeah, but I need more. I need, like, other pieces. I need other lenses first. Like, I already have the focal range. I'm not disappointed with the 24 to 70. GS. No, no, it's fine. It's fine, right? Like, like it's fine, but, but like, eventually I'm going to replace... I know, dude, primes are so much fun. So, so like, so like th that's the problem I have now, right? Like, I really want to get the 50mm one, too. Like, I yeah. wish that could be my next lens, but I know I have to get the 50 and 35 next. Yeah. Like, because, I, because like, like... <sighs> Focal length is more important than aperture. You yeah, know what I mean? I know. Like, like it I, is. <laughs> it is realistically. That's why you always start yeah. off with the focal length kind of you want. Well, well, you ideally start off with. If you're doing photos, you probably start off with a twenty-four to seventy. If you're doing video, primarily, you start off with a fifteen and thirty-five. Uh, if you're doing landscapes for photos, you'll start off with a fifteen and thirty-five. Um, but like, like I've been wanting to like kind of shoot weddings a little bit and like. Kelly's been kind of pushing me to shoot weddings. I'm like, I can't. Why? She's like, what do you mean? You take really good photos. I'm like, I, I literally can't. Because you don't have like, the like, lenses. Right. Because like, so like, so like picture like a church, dude. Like, yeah. like I'm not going to be literally next to the priest with my 24 no, to 70. No. You like, like, like you cannot shoot a wedding without having a 70 to 200. You just can't do it. It's impossible. I know. You need, it's you need impossible. Get the wine. Well, 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 wine. well, you need a telephoto technically. Well, yeah. Because because oh yeah, you know, what we, am I saying, dude? Use your eight hundred mil, dude. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Let me go outside the church. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know the minimal focal distance. Yeah. It, it, you know the twenty four to seventy dude? could do it. You just crop. <laughs> dude, you're forty megapixel, dude. Come on, dude. Forty five point one, dude. People are shooting weddings on a fucking. Uh, a seven three, dude. Come on, dude. You could do it. You could. You just have higher standards for yourself. I do, but they don't. Do. Wedding people. Well, that, also a twenty four to seventy. I I can't crop for compression, dude. I can't crop for that two hundred mil compression. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, no, you're right. That's that's still gonna be there. Damn. Yeah. Good point. But yeah, I mean, that's if you shoot the two hundred. Yeah, I mean, you really want that two hundred mil compression, dude. It'll, it'll, it's so nice. Like yeah, like hundred mil plus compression is gorgeous. Yeah absolutely gorgeous okay uh, no i get it i get it you don't have the lens selection but yeah if you ever shoot a wedding dude call me out dude i'm, I'm coming I'm yeah coming. dude let's do it i want to get i, I want to shoot weddings too dude that'd be fun i want to do it, something with my camera so but part of my dream is that we could both quit our jobs and like we could do weddings and like i would do photos and you would do video oh man that'd be sick let's go yeah, right right let's start the actually company, ha actually dude uh i can show you after this podcast i went to school with someone who does full-time wedding photographies and she makes literally probably i would say maybe two hundred thousand dollars a year you're kidding what but she does destination weddings like some of her some of her photos are nuts she's my age she went to high school with me and her instagram has photos of her who and she just flew out to egypt to do a honeymoon shoot what in egypt fuck? yeah dude yeah. let's go let's go to egypt yeah. dude yeah i'm on board like just just bonkers photos dude. dude yeah she's she's awesome but like you know i respect it because she's someone who had a passion she had the drive and she went yeah. with it and it's and drive, it just goes to show you because like i think in high school she she uh, shot with a canon rebel you know what i mean yeah, so like no that's amazing i mean that's great dude that's yeah. a success story i like yeah. it yeah but uh i don't know man we'll talk more about cameras i think we got to wrap the podcast up just uh, unfortunately to, uh, yeah we're to, well, we can talk offline about it but i want to wrap this sucker up dude so uh, you know, thanks for coming to the Techno Study Podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a, kind of a weird podcast because we wanted to talk about all the things, but uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for coming. Just so anyone knows, like, if the topic seemed a little off off pace, you know, we planned on cameras, but then we have that surprise surface event and we wanted to cover it. Exactly, dude. So, anyway, catch us on the technostatic.com and uh, Technostatic YouTube channel and uh, leave us comments, subscribe, do and all don't that. Don't forget thing. to listen to 
listen to us anywhere you listen to podcasts. That's right. See you guys in the next one.